So um, today we'll be talking about building with straw, which isn't very common around here because it's just, it's way too humid. <clears throat> and you end up spending more on the protection than you spend at all on the straw. Um, so straw it, it is a byproduct that once, you know, um, it's basically cereal plant matter that's been stripped of the chaff and all the grains. And so you have this leftover waste that uh, it's mostly used in, with bedding for livestock and thatch work. So, you know, if you're planting grass, something like that, you throw that down as a protective cover, keeps the birds out of the seed. And then uh, it's really good insulator for animals that live, you know, outdoors and in a barn. Um, it's easy to muck, uh, cleans up quick. After you do the mucking, you can actually transfer it over to a compost pile and reuse that to fertilize. And it's been used as an insulation since recorded history uh, for homes. So straw is one of the most renewable uh, resources that we have. You can grow it pretty much anywhere. Uh, the harvesting, uh, it supports the, the local farmers and even the big farmers. And it also supports local businesses because farmers need equipment to harvest it and they also need for it to be repaired. And uh, that, that's where I worked for a long time uh, with the service and repair of farm equipment. I still do it on the side, but uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a slowing industry right now just because of the economy and COVID. So here in the States, well, you know, North America, uh, there, was a, there was a boom in straw construction in the Midwest, in the Great Plains, because there's not a lot of timber available in that area. So they would use straw to construct homes and most of them started out as just temporary shelters uh, because the, the straw would go bad. Uh, anytime moisture is involved, uh, it actually starts rotting and mildewing from the inside. And I don't know if you've ever smelled like rotten straw or hay. It's uh, probably the worst thing you'll ever encounter. Um, Along with the industrial age, the invention of, you know, diesel, gasoline, and, and steam engines, the uh, harvesting of straw became much quicker. And so they were able to build more faster. And people realized that the, the straw would actually makes a great insulation and they started protecting it with mud, stucco, and those type of uh, materials on the interior and the exterior walls. So currently, straw building is popular in what is called the brown construction movement. Uh, and that's a concept of using easily renewable resources to build a home. It's popular because it retains the heat during the colder months and is cooling during the winter. Hang on, let me pull this down here. So when you're talking about R value with straw, it's not as efficient as conventional insulation it's, uh, you have to go with much thicker walls. Um, so most popular is what's called a two stringer bell. 
And that's what you're going to find mostly around here in West North Carolina is a two stringer measuring three feet by a foot and a half and 14 inches. And the R rating is actually pretty good. It's an R30 compared to eight inch high density uh, that offers the same value. You're basically going to lose square footage due to the thickness of walls, but the cost difference is, you know, your eight inch high density fiber is 45 cents per square foot versus 14 cents per, per straw per square foot. So the cost of building is around uh, $130 if you're using a contractor or a home builder. But if you do it yourself and you've got friends to help out, it can drop down to 60 bucks. Um, using reclaimed materials such as pallet and, you know, like old barn wood to construct the foundations and the sides, you can build a 20 by 10 house for around 25K. So with the modern construction methods, they are now using, um, you know, vapor barriers that you glue to the bills. Uh, they're installing sheetrock wood. They're using recycled, uh, like vinyl plastic siding uh, to protect the straw, which adds way to the cost and is more niche to that, uh, you know, that, that people who come from money, you know, the new age heavy, that's what they're doing. So when you're building the straw, you have to actually put it up off the ground because moisture will seep through uh, the flooring and get into the straw, which causes rot and mildew and mold. And the mold that usually grows in a straw ends up being black mold and you don't want to have that in your house. You don't want to breathe that one bit. Uh, but really anything that creates a barrier for moisture will work, but the floor and frame are usually made of wood. Uh, I've seen some where they've used concrete, but that's, that's pretty rare. All right, so here's where everything gets screwed up. Uh, so where else is straw used? It's used as an additive in constructed lumber. So that the, like the press wood, the composites, it's, it's used in that as a strengthener and a bond. Um, again, ground cover for growing grass. And there's a... Uh, there's a mixative called light straw clay, which actually is a better method for this area for construction because they mix clay with the straw. It's moldable into these uh, small balls that you can actually stack and compact along the frame. And it has to be done during like the warmer months and the summer months where we don't get a lot of rain. And, uh, you compact it down and you have to let it dry and then you can smooth that surface and actually just, you can paint over it, you know, stucco, whatever. But once that, once it dries, it becomes a very solid structure. So building with straw, straight straw is not good for Western North Carolina. It's just way too humid here. We get too much rain. Uh, the time it takes for you to actually stockpile the straw and hopefully this, the straw was stored properly in a dry space in a controlled environment, you run the risk of this straw being rotten or moldy. Uh, and it takes time to build these things, you know, and there's gotta be some type of protective cover 
and every time I've seen it try to be done here, I would visit a farm out in uh, Burnsville, and they were trying to uh, line their barn with the straw covering on the outside, and it had gone rotten. I mean, immediately as I pulled up, because I went out there to work on their tractor, I mean, the smell was just terrible. And they weren't very experienced in doing construction and having to, you know, tell them like, you know, dude, <laughs> I know you paid like $22 per bill, but it, it's got to come down. It's, it's, it, it's all gone bad. <laughs> I'm trying to get Google to come up. Hang on. All right, so here, oh, come on. I can't bring this up without pulling up the website, but this is kind of what you would use to mix your light star clay in. Just right, really right click on it and then open in a new, uh, hover over the picture and right click. There you go. Okay. So basically, you, you would take this cylindrical tube and you mix in your clay with your straw. And there are actual mechanical mixers to do this, but it's cheaper just to use, you know, this uh, uh, this metal cylinder. And you guys just take and you turn it over by hand, you and a few of your friends, that actually, you know, that'll mix it up. And then, let's see here. What's the dry time? It really depends on how humid it is outside. Um, the dry time for it to completely set is probably two weeks. Ooh, okay. But still, that's much better than having to deal with the added cost of having to cover the, the regular straw structure with, uh, you know, stucco or wood painted surfaces. Let's see here. Well, that's not very big, but that's kind of what the the uh, the finished product looks like. I wish you could find a bigger image of it. I had one. Oh, crap.
Oh, there's bigger on the other one. <clears throat> All right, so can you guys see what I'm pointing at here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, I can't bring it up in a bigger image, but that's basically what the composition looks like. You can see there's definitely a lot of straw in the clay binding everything together. Um, the nice thing about using like this uh, light straw clay is it's moldable. So you, you don't have to worry about conforming to a strict structure. Like I've been, we've been kicking this idea around. We've got this uh, two levels in a field that has an eight foot rock wall that is starting to come apart. And what we're thinking about doing is using light straw clay to build a hobbit hole, you know, to use it as kind of like an Airbnb and covering and using light straw clay to actually make the structure over a, uh, a thatch lattice. And then building a grade of about 12 degrees down from the eight foot rock wall to the lower barn and using the uh, the hobbit hole as a space filler on in the middle so we don't have to spend as much on fill dirt for each side to make that grade. If that makes sense. I'm gonna take over for just a second. Uh, when, uh, let me go back up here. Light, straw, clay. So, uh, well, I'm getting a little different pictures than you. Um, so they can, they can basically make bricks out of this stuff. They can make bricks out of it. It's usually easier to work with it when it's still moist, when it's still a little wet. So doing it packed walls like this, you're saying, is better? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've actually been doing some uh, drawings of the Hobbit hole in the grade scaping. And uh, I'll share that whenever I get more of a solid mm -hmm. sketch on it. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. That'd be real what's, good. What's the compression strength of that? Will it hold a lot of weight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it'd be just like any other brick structure. It's uh, I didn't look up the actual compression strength. But I know they're strong once they're built. Uh, you, see, you see a lot of it around here uh, when like say Cameron was more of a rural community. I mean, now there are hardly any farms left around here. Everything turned into, you know, three story, two story houses and they're all packed in together. I'm like, I, I'm sitting on one of the few plots out here that still has over an acre and a half. And, uh, but next door, whenever it used to be my great grandmother's house before they tore it down, they had a claw, a light clay straw structure built to store food in. So they used that as a uh, uh, as a for food storage for their root vegetables, stuff like that. How insect resistant is it? Once it's built and hardened, you do want to paint the surface or at least cover the surface with something that is, uh, you know, insects can't get through because, I mean, it's it's made of, you know, clay and straw and insects eat straw. That's what I thought. Can you put rebarb in it? It looks like they did there. Yes. Yeah, you can. 
So, Brian, you you mentioned mucking. What what did you mean by mucking? <laughs> uh, excuse my French, but cleaning shit. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Okay. Now I'm trying to find. <laughs> So that black mold. Oh, so uh, not familiar. If I don't know if you guys uh, um, are are farm smart or not, but when uh, when you bale hay or straw, uh, so what's the difference in straw and hay? Straw is generally a uh, considered a hollow uh, grass uh, versus hay is a blade grass. So. Straw comes from generally like um, wheat, barley, those kind of, of grasses where um, then you get, you know, just hay that we talk about is uh, from like fescue uh, grass. Also, if, you know, if we bale it, so we go out there, we're going to cut it and uh, we're going to turn it. And when we, let me just, yeah, I mean, uh, straw has really no nutritional value. It's used as a filler if you're going to use it for feed. Yeah. Whereas hay actually does have nutritional value. So you're going to find two different types. So if you get down to, you know, the feed and seed, there are going to be two separate sections. Like here's your hay and here's your straw. Right, right. So... When we're baling the straw, look much like the hay. So cows can eat hay that has been rained on. So if we're if we're baling this and it gets rained on after it's baled, then you can't feed it to horses or goats. No. Because they they their stomach cannot take it. They'll get colic and die. But cows can. So the straw works is kind of the same way. If we were to bale the straw and it gets wet, then we can't use it to build a house with. Uh, we have to get it, you know, we have to get it picked up and stored in, in a barn uh, or underneath uh, plastic or something to keep it as 100% dry as we possibly can uh, so that no mold will grow. Now, uh, you know, like Brian said, uh, rotting, rotting straw, I mean, it's got a definite pungent sour smell to it. And uh, the uh, statue buckeye or statue buttress is black mold. It is the deadliest mold in the world. And so we're going to talk about that on Wednesday when we uh, get back into finishing up our uh, building basics and we're talking about moisture. But uh, so, you know, when we get into this, this straw, we definitely want to keep that as, you know, as, as pristine as possible so that we get it into this wall and protect it. Now, you had said that we have to put some sort of, sort of coating on it. So is that like a stucco generally that's put on there? Yeah, traditionally it's stucco, but now they're using, if they're building a house and they have the money for it and they're just trying to be do that whole brown thing, they're, I mean, they'll, they'll put up a vapor barrier, they'll use sheetrock, the, exter the exterior of the house will be some type of recycled siding. That kind uh -huh. of thing. Tell me more about this brown movement. All right, so the brown movement is people trying to use the most renewable resources and the most economical resources uh, to in construction and in their daily lives. Um, there's some parts of it I don't really agree with because they're trying to use stuff like straw as uh, a heating fuel where they're using that in their wood stoves and it it's it's very heat resistant and it takes a long time to burn but once it starts I mean there's it, it's gone 
So, I mean, some of it's, I don't know, some of it doesn't make sense to me. I just started reading into it. Um, but yeah, they're using, you know, easily, easily renewable resources to build their houses, to feed their children. Uh, you see a lot of these new raised bed gardens that are going on with that because a lot of the soil Okay. Like I had mine tested and I have uh, where we used to have a garden. Uh, now it's just there, there are too many heavy, heavy metals in it for me to actually grow down there. So I'm having to do everything in raised beds. Hmm. When you say heavy, how did the heavy metals get there? Uh, it, from a well. Oh, OK. So you're talking about minerals. Yeah, minerals. Yeah, high mineral content. I got you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Tell us, uh, what are the pros for building with straw? Well, there's plenty of it. It's cheap. Uh, it, it, it's obviously very renewable. Uh, you can do almost anything with it. Like I said, around here, the the light straw clay is really the only building option you're going to have because the soil here is so saturated with water that if you built something out of conventional straw, even with a covering, it, as soon as you know the house settles, you could get a crack in the foundation, a crack in one of the walls, and you're going to, have to tear the whole thing down because the hay is going to end up getting enough the hay. The straw is going to end up uh, soaking in moisture. And developing that mold in the mildew. Uh, but as long as you do the construction correctly, I mean, it's uh, not as itchy as fiberglass, but you know, it, <laughs> and you're going to lose a little floor space because of the thickness of the walls, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a very more worth earth-friendly way of insulation, in my opinion. Well, it's a renewable product. I mean, you know, it can be regrown really fast. So, oh, yeah. Um, so I would say one of the, the cons would be it's uh, high maintenance. It is. Is that safe to say? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is high maintenance. That's a con. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, there's also, you, you can't just think about the, the price of your straw when you're doing the construction, especially around here, because you got to think about your coverings that's going to have to be put up to keep the mold and rot out. But it is a very green way of doing construction. Yeah. What about fire? Is it uh, fire? How would it, how would it do? I mean, it, I guess you got enough clay in there if, if you're using the, the light straw clay method versus the straw bale, uh, that would be probably a better fire resistance than if you use the straw bale. Well, yeah, mixing the clay in definitely helps, but straw is actually pretty fire resistant. Okay. I mean, you'll see, you'll see a hay field catch on fire and just go up, but... You know, if they're just, it's, if it's just an already stripped um, straw field, uh, it, it may singe at the edges, but they've actually used that to uh, extinguish fires. Well, I guess in this case, it's, it's a compact, more dense. Uh, I spent one Christmas uh, on a, on a hay fire, on a barn fire, but, you know, of course it was, uh, it was not compact and uh it went up like a son of a gun yeah no that's like i said i mean you, if you're going to use it you have to build it right yeah anybody else got some questions for brian comments brian did you see any other sort of framing details that would be you know, advantageous for use with straw. My only experience with straw was uh, with timber frame. Is with timber frame gives you a lot of area to provide a lot of extra insulation. Yeah, timber frame. 
definitely is most commonly used. I've also seen uh, them use like interweaving uh, just gathered timber into these lattice works over the frame. Like this? Yeah. 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 And uh, around here, uh, there's also a, a God, where is it at? We, we we can easily grow bamboo, and there are a lot of bamboo fields that we have in the local area, and that stuff is really resilient and it's very flexible. So you can form basically any type of. I mean, if you wanted to make a dome structure, you could you could interweave it together to do something like that. I'm, I was thinking about using some of the masonry brick stacking techniques with the straw bale as well. If you could, you know, make something pretty structural just with the straw. Right. You're saying use the straw as a as a as a supporter for veneer. Me, I was just thinking about, you know, if if I wanted to try to make a straw wall without using any lumber in it, you know, to try to minimize the amount of uh, of wood or you know, increase the amount of R value. I'm just wondering, I, I think you could probably use a straw bale kind of like you'd use a, a masonry unit and, you know, use your uh, interlocking patterns and your... Like this. You're talking about like a running pattern. Yeah, use a running uh, bond or do some, you know, soldier joints and et cetera, just to make, you know, like the tallest straw bale structure I've ever seen was three stories tall, but they did it with timber frame. And it seems like, that's a lot to ask. Be a lot to ask of just the straw. I just I, I find it interesting to think of ways that we can use just the renewable resources and not try to make it as much like traditional framing as some of these pictures. Yeah, right, right. Can't find an album on my slideshow. I had a really good picture of them using um, fallen timber they had collected uh, without even milling it. They were just, you know, kind of used it to make that 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 lattice st structure overhead, and then use mm. uh, logs as supporting frames, and then built from there. And it actually looked really nice once they were finished. I'm trying to find that, and I can't. <clears throat> Getting close, but no cigar. Eric, can't you run his slideshow like you pull ours up and then he can talk about it? I don't have any more than he did. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I guess Chromebooks aren't what they're cracked up to be. So this is another way of mixing <clears throat> clay in the straw, uh, much like what we were talking about in the cob where they were stomping it. Uh, but this does it without stomping it. Is that correct? No, I'm trying to see it. Hang on. Let me switch back over. Right. Yeah. Using the tumbler. Yeah. That's how the, yeah. Using the tumbler. And so what's nice about that method is you're using only manpower instead of actually having to spend money on, on a gas engine to power it. How much does this have to be turned? It really haven't... depends on how much you're mixing into it, but I mean, you're going to be turning at least probably 20, 30 times to get a mixture going. And at the same time that you're turning, you're having to constantly hit it back with a shovel or a rake. Right. Consistency, right. Wonder about something. Wait a minute, I think I may have seen it there. So this is uh, different recipes for that. So it does give you slightly more R value per inch than wood. It appears. Wood is 1.25 per inch. 
So that is very interesting. Yeah, I base mine off of, uh, okay, so per, per inch, you're looking at an R value of 2.38 and using the two stringer, uh, that's where I came up with, that's where they come up with the uh, value of R30. Okay. Tell me more about this two stringer method. Well, two stringer is the standard size hay bale. Uh, it's 36 inches by 18 by 14. Gotcha. Um, other than that, they have another one called a three stringer, which is a little over four feet by two feet high and about two feet across. So you're actually talking about uh, the number of strings. Yeah, yeah, that's that. The okay, that I was thinking that. So you're talking about how many strings there are across this. This is a two stringer. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm I, sorry. I understand. <laughs> when you were talking about that, I was thinking maybe they were two rows of this going in. Yeah. No. I'm no. with you. Okay, a two stringer has two strings. Gotcha. And you said there was another one that has how many? Three. So that would be a three stringer. Right. Got gotcha. you. Gotcha. Yeah. And then so, after that, into the round bells. Yeah, the no. round bells just are not used, I'm assuming. No, not usually. I mean, unless now a round bell is going to be better for clay construction because a round bell, when compared to a two stringer or a three stringer, is going to end up being cheaper in the long run. Mm -hmm. Because you can pick up a round bell for around 50 bucks. And how much are the two stringers? Two stringers, I mean, it depends on where you, you actually buy it from someone who produces hay or you pick it up from like a, a feed and seed. Uh, so you're talking anywhere from 15 to probably 20. Okay. So Just it makes more sense because you get like with your, your, like say a four by four round bill, you're getting 11 to 1200 pounds of straw as compared to a two stringer where you're getting like maybe 25. Gotcha. Are you talking about an individual uh, two stringer bale of straw? Well, yeah. I mean, some places like I was able to go pick up a bale of straw when it was in heavy production for nine bucks because that's what I used to reline my backyard when I had to put grass down because my dog's an idiot. I was going to say, I don't know about anywhere else, but at Lowe's, yeah, there it is right there. <laughs> we sell them one bale of wheat, which I think covers like, it says 80 square feet. Yeah, you get it for like 7 or $8. Did you come across anything, anybody using any pine needles? Was that something that would, I don't guess it would probably work the same, but I'm just curious. No, I'm not really. People buy that a lot. <laughs> well, I mean, pine needles work well. I used to, when I was working at uh, at Israel and Sons Garden Center, we sold a ton of pine needles, but they usually based, they used it as ground cover. Uh, that stuff's actually pretty flammable. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's got it's sap in it, so yeah, I can understand that. Uh, one thing, you know, you're talking about ground cover, the, the pine needles... If you've ever looked, very, very little ever grows under a pine tree, uh, because, mostly because of the, the sap and so forth. But I've noticed that you put this down on a bed, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't rot quite as fast as, as a straw will. And again, very little will grow through this stuff. So it, it seems to cut down, mm -hmm. but I, I just wondered, I was just curious if, you know, using it for a house, but you say if it's very flammable, then that would not be a cool thing. No, yeah. Pine baling is a multi-million dollar industry in my home county. I mean. Where's that? Yeah, uh, Moore County, you got Piner, Southern Pines, Pinehurst, Pine Bluff. Oh, okay. So you go there, if you want pine straw, <laughs> they ship it everywhere because there's the food. Well, I know you, we would get it in by a tractor trailer load and we had to keep a close eye on it because it retains heat so well that uh, you had to worry about whether 
you know, something would happen and you lose the whole thing. Spontaneous combustion. Yep. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Well, we, have, we have the same problem with the whiskey barrels we bought because people like to use those as planters, but they still had enough residual alcohol in them that they had a tendency to set themselves on fire too. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, any uh, any last questions for Brian? Any last comments? Yeah, I was curious, um, how flammable is the light clay hay? How flammable does that end up being once it's um, finished and then installed? Well, once, uh, I mean, straw itself is already flame resistant to a point, but once you mix in the clay, I mean, you're really dealing with basically a brick. So you don't really, there's no real concern about it being that flammable at that point. Cool, thanks. Okay. I'm, no, I'm definitely no expert on this. I've only helped do this twice, but it, I'm trying to do something I have some experience in. Good, good, yeah, yeah. I'm glad to you know share your experience with us for sure. Uh, if you if you're interested in something like this, you might want to pick uh, Heath Heath Moody's brain. He uh, worked on or built or lived in. I can't remember. He's he's done quite a bit in a. I think his was a straw bale uh, structure up in Boone. So um, you know, I've sat down and talked with him a little bit about that from time to time, but. If you're more interested in that, you make want to, you know, talk with him further on that. Okay, thank you, Brian. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you.